Right now, Russian President Vladimir Putin is preparing to annex occupied areas of Ukraine. Russia claims Ukrainians voted to join Russia in those areas. Well, Ukraine and much of the West call the referendums illegitimate. North Central College professor Bill Muck is joining us now to talk more about the vote. Bill, good to see you. Always good to chat with you. Appreciate your time here uh, this afternoon. So today marked the end of uh, the, the voting. Uh, late word is that Zaporizhia uh, said, yes, we want to be a part of Russia. The world knows that this is a sham here. What does this liberation narrative do and how does the world process what is actually happening? Yeah, yeah, we should start by saying this was not a free election. It was not a fair election. It's it's un, in no ways legal by international law. Uh, and so, so we have to ask ourselves, why is Vladimir Putin doing this? And I think the reason for that is he wants to flip the narrative and flip the script, essentially, and say that up until this point, we've talked about Russia being the aggressor, invading Ukraine. And so what Putin thinks he can do is he can argue this territory is now uh, legitimately Russia. And who's the invader now? Now it is Ukraine and NATO that are the aggressors, right? So I think he wants to change the narrative. I don't think the international audience is going to buy that at all. I think they'll push back. Ukraine will push back against it. But in some ways, Putin is thinking about his domestic audience, and he's trying to, to get support from the Russian people. So completely illegal, but I think Putin's playing a different game. You talk about that, and that was going to be sort of my next question. Maybe this is for the Russian audience. And to that front, uh, we've got these massive evacuations going on as Putin is pressing more citizens into uh, military service with his military mobilization. Uh, with these evacuations, how much is that hurting Russia and its, its drive? Well, I think it's it's hurting both Putin in terms of his own stability, right? So Putin wants to stay in power, and he's over the last you know 10 or 15 years done just about everything he can to ensure that nobody can challenge his power. And what we've seen is that the the war has turned in a dramatic direction against him. I think it's fair to say at this point that Putin is losing the war, and so he has to worry about how his public reacts to that. Up until this point, basically, if you were living in Russia, you really weren't feeling the pain of war too much. There was some pain from the sanctions, but for the most part, your life went along as normal. Normal. Now, if you're a man or somebody who could be drafted or thrown into military service, that fundamentally changes you. And so, so Putin has to think about the domestic public turning against him. And we're seeing hundreds of thousands of, of people fleeing. Uh, so you both have to think about the, the impact on the military, but also on Putin's stability. So annexation is the next step here. At this stage, is there anything that could stop it short of a Ukrainian victory? I think what we're likely to see is Ukraine is going to try to move very quickly to regain more of this territory. So we're drifting towards the winter, and when winter happens there, it's likely that the conflict is going to slow down. So that's why this, you know, the next couple months are so important in terms of uh, gaining territory. Uh, Ukraine doesn't want Russia to annex this territory and then essentially control a whole lot of it. They want to continue to contest that. So I think we're likely to see more aggressive actions from Ukraine and also likely a lot more support from NATO and the United States, some heavy artillery coming in over the next few weeks and months. Just a minute left, and I've got two questions for you here, Bill. If Putin moves forward with the annexations here, uh, economic sanctions from the U.S. will follow. But my question is, at this point, what is left to impose? There's, there's already an extensive regime, so it's not going to fight. It's more symbolic at this point. Over the long haul, these, these sanctions are having an effect, but, but it's not, you know, these, these short-term ones aren't going to dramatically change anything. All right, the, let's talk about the nuclear threat. Any indications that, uh, that Putin is moving uh, closer to that? Because that would effectively change the whole ballgame. I think the nuclear threat is really just rhetoric. Putin understands that if he uses nuclear weapons, the United States will respond. And and uh, the Secretary of State for the United States has made that clear to Russia, that there will be consequences. So so I think what, what we're seeing here is Putin is trying to scare NATO, trying to scare the West. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's very, very unlikely that he would ever use a nuclear weapon because the cost would be so high. Hope you're right. North Central College Professor Bill Muck, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right.